So I went to a showing of 2001 A Space Odyssey in IMAX at the Barton Creek Square Mall AMC Theater last Friday. And uh, I'd, I'd, I'd wanted to actually do a video on, on that day, but it was just, I was like walking out of the theater. I, I went to an earlier show. I went to a 2.30 p.m. kind of afternoon Friday show because I figured, hey, there's, n there's not going to be anybody in the theater. And it's true, there were only like seven people in the theater, so it was beautiful empty theater and you know I'm walking out it's got those and I had that that experience of walking out of the mall movie theater uh, you know with you know the the sun hitting you and you're like oh no <laughs> you know you you gotta shove on your sunglasses immediately and it was just I couldn't I could barely focus my eyes to, to do a video so now in <laughs> in a much calmer setting I can uh, I can do a video on the uh, the incredible I mean oh man it just it, it, incredible Incredible. So it's the 50th anniversary of Stanley Kubrick's 2001 a Space Odyssey, and it's re being re-released on 4K uh, Blu-ray, UHD Blu-ray, and they're doing special showings uh, throughout this year, the 50th anniversary year, 2018 to 1968. They're doing all kinds of showings throughout this year. There was uh, Christopher Nolan uh, promoted heavily the unrestored showings of, of the 2001 and uh, I wasn't that interested in the 70 millimeter I've already seen 2001 on 70 millimeter once and I mean to me 70 millimeter for me is kind of hit or miss you know 2001 was the first film I've really seen in 70 millimeter uh, uh, I mean, I'd seen, you know, IMAX stuff, you know, but it's it's one of the most, you know, there was a kind of a, an area of time in my life when I wasn't watching it, and when I moved here to Austin, 2001, I saw it in, in 70 millimeter, I saw it at the Paramount Theater, and I wasn't that impressed, to be honest. And I think the issue is that with 2001, not only do you have to see it, 70 millimeter is great, but it needs to be seen on the biggest screen possible. Which is to say, if you have 70 millimeter on a small screen, I, it, I don't think it really has the impact, and I don't think it moves you. And that's where there's a lot of these 70 millimeter screens throughout the throughout the United States now these days. It's kind of been a you know Christopher Nolan, Tarantino, and Paul Thomas Anderson. There's been this kind of uh, rejuvenation of 70 millimeter. But the thing is, you've got to see 70 millimeter on the biggest screen possible. I mean, that's what people have been complaining about for years with IMAX, where there's this term LIMAX, where you have IMAX, of course, you have this big format, you've got the projectors, but it's on an average size screen. No, you have to see IMAX and 70 millimeter on the biggest screen possible. So I, I the Paramount Theater 70 millimeter, I mean it's, it was on a small screen. And then the one of the the, re, when the at the end of the film, one of like the next to last reel, they left in like the uh, the tail. They left in this white tail, so or the or it was the header, I don't know. But it was basically the end of this reel and you're in this kind of, you know, hypnotic state of 2001, and then you, you hear, and you see this white stuff on the screen, and it broke the spell, and so that bothered me, and then I saw other 70 millimeter shows here in Austin, uh, they, there's been this thing of Alamo Drafthouse doing Alamo Scope, and they showed uh, The Master in 70 millimeter, and that was good. It didn't seem to have a huge impact on me. And then I saw uh, Inherent Vice in 70 millimeter, and I felt like, almost it felt like a jip. It felt like there's not really anything, you know, there's no impact. But then on that same, this was at downtown at the Ritz, their, their main 70 millimeter theater here is at the Ritz in downtown Austin, Texas. I saw The Master there, I saw Inherent Vice. Then I saw a showing of Vertigo. And that blew my mind. Vertigo and 70 millimeter. There's something about that film, the depth of it, the color. It's it. It was like uh, it was it was uh, an incredible, revelatory experience. It made me consider the film and experience Vertigo in an entirely different way. 
throughout the film, but especially, of course, that end dream sequence with uh, with, with uh, Jimmy Stewart falling amongst those swirling, psychedelic, pulsing colors. I mean, it's like, imagine if you were in the 60s and watching that. It would have changed your life if you had seen a good copy of that. It would have, it would have definitely put you in a... I mean, I, I can't imagine. Incredible. So... Uh, I, I wasn't keen to watch the 70 millimeter of uh, the, this this un, this road show, this rolling print, which has rolled through the past couple months. It's rolled through Austin, the 70 millimeter unrestored version of 2001. Also, the experience of 70 millimeter in Austin is also the experience of you know being stuck like a like a sardine in a sardine can you just you know because Austin is so crowded with people going to these movie experiences you're just kind of you it's it's like standing room only and it's so when this IMAX series of showings that throughout the the country IMAX is showing uh, specifically in a, in a lot of AMC theaters they're showing 2001 I was like this is perfect this is going to be like a mall theater it's going to be very low key uh, there are not going to be a huge crowd you know and it was great there was seven people there it was wonderful because you want to have a good experience with 2000 you don't want to be stuck in there like a sardine can and it's it's like a sardine can with the He's like, I don't know. It's just not a good experience. It's not a good experience to be packed in you know, every show, which you will find yourself if you go downtown in Austin, you go to these big theaters. Oh, I'm going get to get a ticket. And it's like, it's like you're you're packed in there like a, some kind of rock concert. You know, you're watching a movie. You want to stretch out. You want to experience things. You want to have comfort. And I don't like that. So that's why I I went to this 70 millimeter showing, that, rather this IMAX showing. And I mean, they played it. I mean, they did the whole 2001 experience. There were the opening music over black, and there was a there was a a, a family. Uh, most one of, most of those seven uh, people in the in the theater were comprised of this family, this uh, husband and wife and the kids, and you could t you could see them getting restless throughout this this music. And uh, and then the, the the blue MGM lion comes on and and the wife says there you go and it was confusing because it seemed like she actually had watched the movie before and she knew what was going on or maybe she was signaling to everybody oh there you go and and then they started talking and somebody else shushed them and they was like hey guys you're gonna talk the entire movie something uh, hey guys could you stop talking. Something like that, and then after that, it was just a pretty much a quiet, calm setting. It was no, no big deal. Uh, uh, wonderful. I mean, the, the seven. I mean, it's uh, the the Barton Creek uh, AMC is. Uh, it's a mall theater. It's IMAX. It's. Oh, yeah, to, I mean, I saw uh, two, Terminator Two, the three D, the three D re release of Terminator Two. That was uh, earlier this year. I saw that there, and then I saw Blade Runner 2049 in Dolby. I not I not seen it in IMAX there, but I, they have a great Dolby Cinema there, which is uh, showing uh, right next door to IMAX. It was showing Crazy Rich Asians <laughs> there, because you got to see that in Dolby Cinema. Actually, it probably would look quite stunning. I th any any movie in Dolby Cinema looks quite stunning. And uh, but. Uh, right next door, you know, to the Crazy Rich Asians in Dolby, uh, there is the their IMAX theater. And uh, when I was watching Blade Runner 2049 in Dolby, I, I when I was g coming out, I, I walked into the IMAX theater. I was like, whoa, it's a huge screen. And I was like, I almost regretted watching uh, Blade Runner in Dolby. I wanted to watch it in, in, in had that huge IMAX screen there. I mean, it's a, it's a really, I don't know if it's IMAX. I don't know if you'd call that. It's a huge screen. It seems to me to be like a gigantic uh, I, I, IMAX screen. It's wonderful. It's not this whole wraparound thing, but it is a, a nice experience. I, I, I guess a conservative IMAX experience. You would you would call it huge. Theme. And then down, and then you also have the uh, you've got this gigantic set of uh, you know the stadium seats and then very and then at the bottom the front row you've got the one row of like you know uh, you, you'd have to be uh you know 
<laughs> crazy person to to want to get into that to that front row of seats and imagine that I, you know at, at the end of the, at the end of the 2001 I, I went down there and I and I, I looked at some of the credits up at the credits <laughs> Yeah, I mean the whole 2001 experience as I said they did the opening music and then they did a 15 minute inter uh, intermission uh, and uh, and then they played it out with the full music it was just a, it was a full experience there were no trailers there was nothing in the film there was nothing before the film other than the the AMC theater promos I like AMC I mean I don't know a lot of people have complaints and arguments uh, AMC there but there is a kind of like 80s mall styling to the thing this kind of retro style to even the logo and everything and and uh, I don't know there's just something that has an appeal to me and on a, on a very base uh, <laughs> emotional level I love going to the AMC the AMC theater of course when you walk in they were having all these promos for their uh, AMC Stubbs program that was featured they had brochures that were featured that prominently and then they had a whole thing in the standing in the, in the middle uh, the AMC Stubbs club is like kind of like their version of movie pass where you can see I, I think three was it three movies a month and it's you know not strict no restrictions and 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 everything and uh I, I don't know it was it was a it was a it was a good experience i think if you're because this this thing is going to roll through uh you know the imax 70 millimeter showings the that's going to go on throughout the the rest of this year and if you get a chance i think the imax showing of the film it had an impact on me i mean i i'm still thinking about it since since last Friday I mean especially the Stargate sequence the the end the the, the monolith sequence uh, I, I mean I don't know I've watched 2001 so many times it's kind of like the impact is kind of blunted in, in a way and, and I look at it more of kind of intellectual way but it's still you look at some of those effects and you're like how do they do it how is it done? It's done in five or ten different ways, and it's just your mind just kind of gives over to it, and it's it's really an incredible film. It really is just a, a, an amazing, amazing experience. I mean, it's an incredible film, you know, bursting with with optimism and man's progression toward the the future, toward the the great unknown, into into very into the into the nether regions of time and space itself it's a it's a movie it's a it's it's a mind-blowing movie you could you could take it from many many different angles many different intellectual or emotional angles uh but it's a it's a wonderful experience to see in IMAX <clears throat> on the biggest screen possible because I think that even if you got to watch it in 4k if you can get a projector that has the biggest screen possible it's, it's uh, to me that's the important, very important part you know because I mean of course the Cinerama experience the the Cinerama dome the arc light dome you know of course that's the big uh, you know the theater the the thing to see but just the biggest screen possible that's what this movie needs to be seen its impact needs to be felt on the biggest screen possible.